despite what the thumbnail may suggest, today's game analysis isn't quite as hopeless as it seems, although I did just completely blunder a night for absolutely zero reason. Even at the 2200 level, you can still fight back, and you can still do it successfully, as you're going to see later on in the game. So we have the Sicilian defense, and if you've watched this channel before, you know exactly what I'm about to play, A3. And as I mentioned literally in the previous video, um, I love to see knight c6 or e6. In the previous video we saw e6, and if you're interested in that, go check it out. Uh, but obviously, watch this video first. Um, but we have g6, which I believe is technically the best move. And so I go knight c3, bishop g7, and bishop c4. And whilst I don't get to play this b4 gambit style and do the traditional plan of taking a big center, which you will see in many of my other game reviews in the a3 Sicilian, against this Fianchetto setup, um, an e4 knight c3 bishop c4 setup is quite effective because the whole point is to clamp down on the d5 square and this bishop exerts a fair bit of pressure on the black position as you'll see so we have oh my god okay we have knight c6 just developing d3 supports the center opens up our bishop and knight f6 and when I saw this move, I was like, that isn't correct. I'm, I'm sure that's not correct. But I don't remember how I should punish it. Because typically, black goes e6, knight e7. Um, e6 with the intention of blocking off my bishop's diagonal. But knight f6, e6, intending to play d5, kind of succumbs to bishop g5, where this pin's quite strong. Whereas if the knight's on e7, then it's supported by the other knight, which therefore supports d5. But I kind of got my move order a bit mixed up. Bishop g5 here isn't as effective, because this isn't actually a pin. But obviously, it's still dead equal. It's not a blunder or anything, it's just a slight positional in inaccuracy. So we have castle, knight g to e2. The reason I put it here rather than here, is so that one, it supports my other knight, and if I maybe transfer this knight to d5, I can bring the other one into support, and secondly, it leaves the option for f4 open after I castle, which is very typical in this structure. So we have h6, I drop my bishop back to h4, and a6, intending b5, bishop b7 ideas. So I drop the bishop back to a2, preemptively, and instead of playing b5, my opponent goes d6, which opens his bishop up. And in this position, in this position, I would encourage you to try and find the worst possible move that white can play. Like, intentionally try and lose the game with white here. You might suggest moves like bishop e6, bishop takes f7, maybe e5, maybe d4, oh, d4 is not that bad, uh, maybe b4. Whilst those are all great contenders for the worst move in this position, I think knight f4 is pretty high up there. It's pretty bad. And okay, the reason I play knight f4 is because if black plays a move like rook b8, then I'm going to take on g6, threaten this rook, and this pawn cannot take my knight because it's pinned to the king. And with my 11 seconds spent on this move, I somehow just completely overlook g5. The most obvious of forks known to man, and being the rating that I am, I really, really shouldn't be falling for. I mean, in the moment I played the move, I mean, I saw immediately what I'd done, and my opponent takes all of six seconds to punish me. 
So I play knight g6 anyway. And I'm kind of hoping my opponent takes so that I can at least get a rook for my two pieces and try and claim my opponent's kingside structure is ruined. But of course, two pieces for a rook is still fantastic for my opponent. Uh, but my opponent just plays rook e8. And my bishop's under attack. So I move it to g3. Remember, he still can't take me. Because the pawn is pinned to the king. But after e6, blocking the diagonal off from my bishop. Where is my knight going? It has no way out. It can't take anything. And my opponent is about to take it with the f-pawn. So, my knight is effectively trapped in what looks absolutely insane. Like, how did a knight just get to g6? <laughs> um, it just looks ridiculous. I play e5 because, I mean, I'm making a threat, right? Obviously, this would be amazing for me. But my opponent isn't going to be so kind. If he takes the pawn, then my knight escapes. And I'm very happy. But he just plays knight d7. And again, where is my knight going? It still has no way out. But, but, you still got to make the best of a bad position. So I play h4. I should have taken on d6. But h4, I'm attempting to open up the h file. Maybe bring my queen to h5 and try and get some counterplay. Try and get some counterplay going. Here the computer wants d5. Which is absolutely cold-blooded. Because my bishop is never getting into the game now. And this knight has been sitting here for however many moves. Still has no escape. But my opponent is not a computer. And he just takes the knight. Which is obviously not a bad move. But... It's not the best. So I take on g5. He takes back with the queen. But this allows knight to e4. And although my pawn is attacked five different times <laughs> with only one defender, his queen is hanging. So he can't take it. And obviously if queen takes, then bishop takes, right? So he goes queen d8. Knight takes d6. And... Here, I have a pawn for a knight, which is obviously a horrible deal. But this bishop's looking pretty good. This knight looks pretty good. My opponent should probably just take this pawn and give the rook up. But he plays rook e7. And all of a sudden, even though... Sudden? That's the, um, the northerner in me. Um... <laughs> And, and after rook e7, I get to play f4, which is the only good move. Because this pawn is now supported by another pawn. And if this pawn is supported, then this knight is supported. And if this knight is supported, I've got chances. I'm a piece down for a pawn, but I have chances. I also, I could have... Um, well, I couldn't play bishop h4 in this position because of g5. But after f4, if black plays a nothing move, then bishop h4 is a threat. Because I'm just simply skewering the rook and the queen. And I'm actually better. So, my opponent, despite being a piece up, is only just better. And I'm, ba I'm back in the game somehow. Somehow. So we have knight f8. Bishop h4. g5. f takes g5. Bishop takes e5. Now he doesn't take back. Because after bishop takes g5. The rook hangs. Whereas in this situation. I would have to spend an extra move. Moving my pawn to open up an attack on the rook. But in the meantime. My knight is now hanging. But again. I'm a piece down. But these pieces are starting to congregate on the king on the king side. And my opponent suddenly his king's looking kinda of bare. Like all the pawns have just disappeared. So 
I take on c8. I should have played knight e4. I was considering that in the game, but I thought it was a bit too slow. I thought that b2 would hang, and that would be a big problem. In retrospect, I've got quite a nice attack going here. Uh, you should probably just retreat the bishop g7. But I've, I've actually got quite a nice attack now. Probably take play something like this. Um, but I just take on c8 because it now means that I've got another move. Apparently rook takes was the move because... Because why? I don't know. But apparently queen takes c8 is a horrible move. Because after g takes h6, opening up an attack on the rook, rook h7, I get queen g4, which is the only real move that I can play here. Checks the king, king moves, and bishop g5 blunders the game. Apparently I should have castled. I didn't want to allow this though, but this is going to be mate. Because, ah, because the rook can't take because it's pinned to the king. And if king h7, then queen g7 is mate. And if bishop takes, then here, here, and it's game over. I missed that. I played bishop g5 with the logic that my pawn's defended. But that allows bishop takes b2. Whereas if I had a queenside castled, that pawn would have been defended. But it does allow rook b1. Bishop c3 check, king d1. Apparently I should have retreated my bishop, but it's it's difficult to trade pieces in these kinds of positions. Being a piece down, you want to keep pieces on the board, right? So I go king d1. And my rook is putting pressure on the pawn and keeping this queen die tied down. I've got a lot of pressure going here, although it is defended. I obviously have this great h6 pawn, which is keeping black's rook very busy. Uh, so my opponent goes queen d7, which maintains a focus on both these important squares. Rook b3 tries to kick the bishop, so the bishop goes to e5. Rook e1. I realize this rook is done on the h-file because my bishop keeps h6 under control, so I should try and shift it towards a softer target. Here my opponent goes knight g6. Now, it's difficult because what does my opponent do here? Whilst he is up a piece, his king is exposed. He also has 5 seconds and I have 15 seconds. But I've, I've got a lot of pressure on his position. If he plays a lazy move like bishop c7, then bishop f6 and it's game over. Because this king has no way out. And this pawn controls the all important g7 square. So my opponent plays knight g6. And this is not losing. But it gives me a clear advantage. Now I'd encourage you to try and find the move. And based off of what I was just saying. About bishop c7 allowing bishop f6, you should be able to find rook takes e5, sacrificing the rook, and after knight takes e5, well, yeah, the computer actually just wants to ignore the rook, and all the moves suggested, these, these are the suggested moves, all try to control f6, because once you let the bishop into f6, it is game over. King g8. Bishop takes e5. Because the knight is pinned to the king. Rook takes h6. Defending the knight. Rook b6. Which. Again is the only winning move. Opening up this bishop. Which was previously closed off by the rook. Everyone gangs up on the e6 pawn. So it's going to fall. No matter what. If a move like rook e8 is played. Bishop takes e6. These bishops are absolute snipers. The knight is still pinned. And where does the king go? If it moves to a square like h7. Bishop g8. Rook takes g8. 
and the queen hangs because my bishop moved away with check. The queen is hanging in this position. Of course, I can just take the queen. Like, he has to react to it. He can't allow his queen to be aligned with the bishop if this pawn gets taken with check. So my opponent takes four seconds. He's down to three seconds. I'm on six seconds. We're finding some nice moves considering our time. So he goes to h7. So bishop e6 does not come with check. We have knight takes e5. Now if my opponent moves his queen, it's not easy for me to win this. Now bishop f5 allows queen takes here and I don't have enough attackers on the knight. So here I would have to be quite accurate. Queen e4? Queen e4 pins the knight. My bishops are doing an incredible job. I'm still down in exchange technically, but these bishops are monsters. And the game goes on. I don't know whether I would have found queen e4 in this position with such low time. Realistically, I probably would have retreated my bishop. Allowing something like this. But even here, the position is so much easier to play with white. The king is actually quite safe. The computer wants king h6 to threaten queen g5 check trading queens, which is an absurd move. <laughs> like, who comes up with that? But all that to say, my opponent plays knight takes e5 here. And if I take my opponent's queen, he takes my queen, I take the knight, and I lose my rook. So I would have to play this and just be down a rook. So knight takes e5 would be a good move, if not for queen check. Now the queen could go to f5 or e4, it doesn't really matter. But I move my queen with a check on the king whilst his queen is still under attack and his queen importantly cannot block any of the checking squares so after king g7 bishop takes d7 rook takes b6 remember we saw that in the previous um previous variation i have queen takes e5 check attacking the king i keep my bishop and we have two rooks against a queen and a bishop and with three seconds on the clock my opponent resigns because whilst it might be worth playing on two rooks versus a queen and a bishop under normal circumstances, these are not normal circumstances because his king has zero defense. He's going to have to play very accurately to not get mated here. And even if he survives, he's probably going to lose all of his pawns. And of course, I'm going to promote probably my G pawn. And so that was the game. So coming back from the absolutely horrendous knight f4 move, um, we managed to break apart the kingside structure, which if you're down a piece, you might as well go for it, right? You might as well just take the game to your opponent. That's exactly what happens. But we find some accurate moves. f4 is very important. We have... A few mistakes from myself and my opponent. Queen g4 is an important move. And despite des despite several inaccuracies from both of us, we are both on such low time, as you can see, that rook takes e5. Yeah, rook, rook takes e5 just completely wins the game because he cannot allow bishop f6, and he allows it, and... Whilst we still have to be a bit accurate, we still have to be a bit accurate, like rook b6 is a must. It, it's an absolute must, but it's also a fairly obvious move. Like, of course, you want to put loads of pressure on e6. And finding queen e4, check, with four seconds left on the clock to pick up my opponent's queen and get him to resign in this position. I was very happy with this game because it's so easy to just resign when you 
blunder just you, you blunder a piece for no reason whatsoever. Sometimes it is worth continuing the fight because you might as well. You you, you might as well give it a go. If you stayed until the end, thank you very much. I really appreciate your support. Please drop a like and subscribe if you found it entertaining or educational, which is the, the, the latter is probably more likely if we're being realistic. And with that said, have a good one.